Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing an upgrade on this battery pack that I put together in a couple of videos ago. And this is set up where there are eight 1.5 volt D cell batteries on this and they all add up to give you 12 volts. Now this used to be a battery pack that was used in a fluorescent lantern that I used to take camping with me. And the idea was is there were two springs on the inside that would make contact with these bars here and that's how you would pick up the 12 volts. But what I did was is I tapped off of those, that's what these wires going inside here are, and in this cavity in between all the batteries here uh, is a buck boost converter and it's actually taking the voltage and setting it to 5 volts for this USB port over here. And this outputs about 3 amps. Well, I say about because the module is rated for a maximum of 3 amps and the higher the voltage you put out of it, the higher the amperage is. And it just, it seems like it doesn't really put out enough oomph to actually power my tablet, which requires a 2.1 amp uh, charger. And not only that, but I wanted to upgrade this so I can have more than one port. And right now as it is, there's an on off switch. Middle here is off. If you go in this direction for on, it just lights up these two LEDs, doesn't really do much. And then if you flip it the other way, you see this green LED lights and this port becomes active. So we're gonna modify this just a bit today. Uh, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the actual buck boost circuitry in this. Now a buck boost converter is kind of what it sounds like. It's a combination between a buck converter, which takes a higher voltage and steps it down to a lower voltage, and a boost converter, which takes a lower voltage and steps it up to a higher voltage. So the idea of this is, was supposed to be, uh, when these batteries start losing voltage and they drop down from 12 to 11 to 10, so on and so forth, they're gonna to get to the point where they're gonna to get to that five volt uh, power rating there. and what this will do at that point is it'll kind of stabilize and when it starts to go lower than 5 volts It will step the voltage back up to 5 so no matter what we should get 5 volts out of this thing And that's kind of the idea so that way we can actually really drain these batteries down a lot and uh, That's good because they're not rechargeable batteries. So when these die we really want them to be dead We don't want any juice left at all in them and uh, This has actually worked pretty good for me. In fact last time I went camping uh, last year actually I took this with me and this was a battery bank for my camera So instead of you know taking juice out of the little camera battery I just had this thing plugged in at the base of the camera in lieu of the uh, AC charger Which is normally how I have it hooked up here in the shop. I'm constantly plugged into an extension cord But it worked pretty good and actually I had put these posts up here because what I initially had an idea for was is I could take alligator clips and clip it to this and get 12 volts out of it for another device still while using the five volts out in this. So we're gonna kind of keep it the same way. Uh, I was toying the idea of actually eliminating these and putting in just rivets and just replacing, because that's what I did. I just took these rivets out and replaced them with these posts. But my rivet gun's actually working. I actually repaired that in another video. So we might actually do that. Uh, and I was thinking of using this switch to actually activate between a 12 volt output and a five volt output. So there may be another uh, terminal on here to do so. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do all that. I may have to redo this whole front end. This was a uh, kind of luck uh, that got me to this, being able to cut this notch out and get this LED all aligned. Now these came from an existing piece that I had because I didn't have any blank circuit boards at the time. I just wanted to reuse as many old parts that I had. And well, I have uh, some newer pieces and so I should be able to do that. Uh, coincidentally, while I have this in front of me here, there's also another way of doing this with AA batteries. And this, as you can see, and probably can take a guess, this also uses eight uh, 1.5 volt batteries. Now you're not gonna get as much long-term oomph out of this as you would with this with these huge batteries, but this is also much heavier. So I can also modify this in a way so we can use this for something else. It does have a standard nine volt battery snap, but again, I just got some of those in so we could use it for that. Um, but yeah, so let's get started with this. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually take all the batteries out of this and disassemble it. You can see there's two screws up on here and there's also two screws on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. And before I separate the halves, I, I drilled a hole in this one here so we can actually get to the trim pot 
and you can see on the new module this little blue component here with the brass screw on it this is another trim pot and you would adjust that to actually set up the output voltage on these things so this one here if i needed to i can actually readjust the output and here are the two halves separated uh, the red wires going up here that's the positive output blacks are all the negatives so you should see two sets of those in here and then the white is the power coming in from that switch and that same white wire is also the one that comes up here so it comes from this post down to the switch from the switch out to here and then the little leds in here actually just attached to the board now this is all heat uh hot glued into here i should say so we'll actually have to bust that glue to get these pieces out and the bottom here i just used a piece of cardboard just to shim this in place and then there's a little bit of glue in each corner and it held together pretty well i have to say but uh, that'll be fun just to try to get that all apart and here you can see the bottom half after everything's been removed from it there is quite a bit of room down in that cavity and the top and the bottom are exactly the same pretty much other than the way they have the bus bars set up down here as you can see uh, and the only thing left to do now is is to remove the top parts up here but to do that i actually have to undo these ends up here because they were pushed through and then the uh, little ring connectors here are actually crimped on and soldered on lastly. So I'll have to undo all that stuff to be able to pull this out. But you can get a general idea of how this was put together. And this is just that little circuit board as I mentioned that was already part of something else. And I set this up actually where it has these little jumpers on it. Now they don't actually enable anything but when this was originally used for the old project uh, this would be a point that you can attach like an alligator clip to or if you had one of these little DuPont connectors You can plug it in and, and tap power off of it either, you know positive negative whatever And it's just a simple resistor across uh, some, a couple of these pads over here So if you follow it in the bottom, it's just it's a pretty simple device and it's just it's just providing power There's no connection at all for the data lines here now What's interesting about these USB connectors? If you actually look, I painted this with red, white, green, and black. Now those are very common colors for uh, USB wiring. And the two in the middle here, those are actually the data connections. So what normally would happen is in a regular charger, they would have a resistor network here. And whatever device you plug in is actually looking at those resistors to tell the device how much power it can draw. So in future builds, um, I'm going to explore actually manipulating that because uh, I want to make this device able to put out as much power as whatever device you're plugging it into will, will draw. And I know Apple devices are definitely one of those ones that will look at these different uh, resistor values here to be able to pull a higher current off the board. And uh, that will be useful for getting a better charge off the, uh, the phone. But otherwise, it's going to draw like a default current. We'll, we'll call it a slow charge. And, uh, you know, it's quick charge devices are a little different. They actually pull a higher voltage out too. But you won't be able to get as good of a charge off this particular device as you would a regular default charger. And that's evident by using one of these charge doctors. You can plug this in. And this will actually tell you, of course, of course it goes this way, but this will actually tell you how much current's being drawn by the device. And you could plug whatever into this and use a regular plug-in charger, such as like this guy here, or this, and I guarantee you, you'll get a higher current off of that plug-in charger, even though this can certainly supply it, but it's just all has to do with that resistor network. So like I said, that, that'll be something I'll have to do in a future thing. Um, once I figure out, you know, if there's a, a table I can find online that would tell me what those values will be to make it a little bit easier. But if we just look at these side by side, you can see they are very similar. You have a control circuit here, which is one of these uh, uh, XL, uh, it's, uh, it's an XL6009 chip. And they're both the same chip, but this one here has much larger inductors. So this one here is supposed to have a lot higher of a current draw. Uh, also, you can see it's nice because you have these terminals on here. So instead of these having to be soldered directly into the board, you can use these terminals. Uh, and I like this one too because, well, they both have mounting holes, but this one, just they're just a touch bigger. So other than that, I mean, they're, they're very similar, but this is just a little bit of a higher current rating. This one goes up to 4 amps maximum. So we'll, we'll see how, uh, how much better this one actually works. 
Uh, one of the other things here is this, this has a little bit of a larger diode on there, and this one has you know a little bit of a heat sink kind of thing going on here, where this is actually coupled directly to the board, as you can see by it, this big solder blob over here on both sides. But this is actually to help draw any you know, heat through to this board and then the holes over there will dissipate it where this one here doesn't have that. And these do get warm by the way. Uh, I've seen you know, just the regular boost converters, they, they, get, they do get quite warm. However, uh, I did a recent video with an LM317 chip which, which is a linear modulator and these are switched mode just m much like a, a regular switch mode power supply would be like this guy up here is but this is taking ac and then converting it to dc and it's 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 uh, switch mode supply this is from an old computer uh, power supply um, but these dc to dc converters there's obviously a lot less involved in it because you're just going from one voltage to another you don't have to actually convert it from ac to dc or anything like that um, but the thing about them is, is the linear supply, there's a lot more heat given off with them because the way, just the nature of it, you know, you need a, it's a whole different, it's a whole different setup. And, and I'm not going to go into the technicalities of why that one's different than this one. Only thing I can explain, which makes the most sense is you're trading off voltage for heat. So if you're going from 12 volts, in fact, some of those have an input of like 30 volts. If you're going from that 30 volts all the way down to five volt, that has to go somewhere and it's heat. Where these, it's taking the voltage and it's chopping it up. And you know, they, they operate on, on, on a whole different principle. Um, one of the things I can tell you is that they do operate on a higher frequency. And Depending on what you're powering up, you may get a little bit of noise in the actual device. So we're going to do some experiments with running audio amplifiers off this once I have it liberated from this project. And we can see if we can actually get noise off this thing compared to a linear power supply, which should be theoretically pretty quiet. But like I said, the trade-off is heat. You need a big heat sink. Same thing goes with those large power supplies, the AC to DC modules. Uh, if you have a large bench top power supply that's linear it's a big heavy hunking thing usually there's a huge transformer in there because that transformer is taking the voltage in and then bringing it down to a lower voltage and then there's a uh, like a full bridge rectifier in there that's taking the ac and that's bringing it to dc and then you have some other circuits in there to convert that you know smooth it out a little bit like some capacitors and whatnot and then if it's a regulated power supply, then you'll also have the, the linear regulator in there, which is going to give off some heat too. So there's a lot more components involved as opposed to a switch mode power supply. And you're just taking that same signal and you're chopping it up. And that's really oversimplifying the explanation of it. But really, you know, like I said, it's beyond the scope of what this video is or beyond the scope of my basic electronics knowledge. Perhaps one day we'll get into the theory of everything like that. But for now, you just need to know that linear supplies are a lot, uh, lot more inefficient than these are, which were much more efficient. So enough about that. So what I'm going to do now is, is just completely reassemble, uh, uh, disassemble the rest of this here. And we'll get all this figured out how we're going to lay it out. Taking a good up close look at this, you can see what I did with the LEDs. There's actually just a resistor uh, wired into the positive side of each one here. And then the two negatives are actually connected directly to the, the negative rail here, if you will. And they're just connected right to that switch. So we're going to eliminate all that. Um, the LEDs really didn't serve much purpose. I was trying to figure if using those for like a uh, uh, an indicator light of sorts where I could leave this someplace and like locate where it was you know if um for example if i had this at my campsite and i was walking back from somewhere i could leave the lights out and find where this was but i really didn't use it honestly it wasn't necessary and the only reason why i actually did that to begin with at all was because all i had were these on off on switches i didn't have standard uh, off on switches so if i had that i would completely just eliminate that and just put a regular on off switch here but um we'll see what i'm going to do with that i was thinking about actually doing two of these one for 12 volt and one for 5 volt and that way you can select between the two and then have two different outputs but 
I would have to actually modify this a little bit more. And I was actually thinking about ways of doing that. And one of them was actually to uh, undo these two rivets here and completely remove these bus bars and then connecting the wires directly to these, bring them in and then possibly come back out somewhere, maybe with those posts that we originally had and set those posts up as 12 volt posts or maybe a DC barrel jack, I'm not really sure. Um, but one of the things is since there's so many holes here, I'm gonna have to either completely cut this out and put something else on top of this to get us the ports that we want or reuse these, which would mean that I would have to take this and try to line everything up exactly the same way it was. So there is some thinking to do here before I go too much further. Well, I did some looking around and well, I think I'm gonna take this old cover to an old DirecTV box that someone gave me to tear down and I'm gonna get my snips out. I'm gonna cut this piece out right here between these screws and I'm gonna use this metal plate and that will allow me to fit this in here and I can actually just eliminate this whole piece. You can almost see where the molding is coming through on the other side. But we can actually just cut that whole piece right out and that should be big enough to fit over the top of that. And then also uh, I, I will eliminate these whether or not I drill that hole out or not is remain to be seen, but we'll see. But I can get these plates right out the way because that way that doesn't short up against it. Well, I managed to get this little piece of metal cut out of the side of that using this very large pair of tin snips. It's, uh, it's like cutting paper, not that bad. I did have to bend some of the metal, as you can see, by some of the scoring over here, just to be able to get the snips in there. This is actually the back screw, so this was folded over. But yeah, no problem, got that out, as you can see from all the little curly Q pieces from trimming it and everything else. I might have to trim this just a little bit smaller. Uh, what I'm doing now is, is I'm actually scoring out the area on here where I'm going to cut this piece of plastic right out, just so we have perfect clearance. But as you can see, that should fit pretty good. Uh, the only advantage of keeping it this way, perhaps, is I could probably use these holes that I, I made over here to rivet this in place so it doesn't actually pop out. We'll see how we're going to uh, actually attach it. I uh, still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with these two holes yet, whether I'm going to you know, remove these rivets and just redo it or not. Uh, I refrained from doing that originally because the system that I had, I would have had to have put a screw through this, which isn't going to fit now. but. I was afraid that that screw might hinder actually being able to install the battery in place. Uh, and also while I was looking around for something suitable to use, I did come across a simple on off paddle switch. Uh, you can see the difference between the paddle switch and the standard switch, this is just rounded off. But I, this only has the two terminals on it. I don't have to actually worry about having the third thing, which was kind of useless anyway. Also, uh, when I do teardowns and stuff, especially for things that aren't going to get used any longer. I keep all the old pieces and while they are kind of building up here in the shop and in my shed, some of these things do get reused. So this one here was actually an old power supply uh, or at least part of it for a CCTV system. And these are the individual channels that went out to the individual cameras and this is where you hooked power into to get to those cameras. So if I want, I can actually desolder these and use these for this project. Here's a little bit of a status update. You can see I've removed one of the actual uh, contacts here using a 9 16th drill bit. I just drilled through the very top of the rivet here, it's all popped out. You can see the contact remained in place on the other side there, but I should be able to pop that out and actually I cut the complete square out. Now to do that, I just ran along with a razor blade and just scored it. And I actually had a little bit of a hindsight. I saw these two holes obviously from the top, but I forgot about the two pillars from the other side that the screws from the other side of the case would screw into. So when I got to over here, I couldn't figure out why this piece of plastic wasn't actually ripping out. But once I overcame that, uh, kind of what I did was is I came along a straight like this. I came in straight in the corners here, as you can see, and then I just gave it like a little 45 over here. And once I snapped it out, I was able to trim it. So it's actually pretty good. Uh, so now once I drill the rest of this out here, I should be able to figure out how I'm gonna actually fix this plate to the front of it. Most likely I'll just drill out a couple more holes over here you can see I could probably use this little indent here as a guide to where to put the drill bit so we can actually rivet that in from the front. Then the other thing I'll have to do is, is actually chase this uh, hole down 
from the other side with a long drill bit or something so I can mark out where these holes are going to be so I can actually drill that out so I can get a screwdriver through there to be able to take this thing back apart again. And what I did here is, is I taped the plate onto the front and using this piece of wood to not put holes in my desk, I just held this in place and drilled the four holes out from the back so those are where we get riveted into. And then I also marked inside here with a marker so if I pop this off, you could see I know exactly where everything will fall onto this. And this should hold on there pretty well with those four rivets. Now what I will do is I'll actually I have some files in the house here, just some, some real thin files. I'll just clean this up a little bit so these edges aren't protruding over here. Ultimately, this is going to get painted. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'll have to get this done for the trip I'm going on. Incidentally, uh, this video is going to be uploaded on this upcoming Tuesday, tonight, Sunday night, and I'll actually be at a park camping at that particular time. So I'm trying to get this video done tonight so that there's actually something to present on Tuesday night, one of my normal upload nights. And what I did here now is I actually popped four rivets in place just to hold this plate into place and we can get an idea how it's going to look. And I figured out if I took one of these long, thin files, and actually pass this down into the hole and scratched around within the boundaries of that hole on the other side, we could see where exactly that, that it's going to line up on the other side to be able to mark the hole out. And uh, I use this flat file here to be able to clean up those holes nicely. So if I pop these back up, some are a little more snug than others, but we should see we have these nice markings over here so I can center punch those as best as I can and drill them out with a large drill bit. And I might have a piece of sandpaper in here. If that's the case, I'm just going to give this a quick sand job so you, we get all this crap off of here that you can see. Uh, the only other thing is straightening this out. I don't have a way of doing that in here. Um, maybe if I could take some pliers. I initially took a pair of these, um, not those a pair of these flat bill pliers over here and I went around the edge like this and just like kind of crimped it all along and that helped a little bit but not as much as I would like it to this I know this corner here is a little bit of a problem so maybe I can just give it a little bit of an adjustment I don't want to uh, do it the other way where it's going to be dished out but we'll see how I can get this straight uh, the other thing is I'm going to use these ring terminals here and I don't know what size these are. It might say on the other side, but it's kind of small. And we're gonna put these right on the other side here and these are gonna get popped in place. Now these are gonna have to get popped in from the other side because I need this to be flush. And since these are pop rivets, this isn't gonna be clean like these are. This is a special type of rivet that they used here. And I, uh, in case you're wondering what size I'm using, I have a whole assortment here. I went with these guys here which are uh, the 1 8th and they're just a little bit longer than the other ones over here. This is what I initially went with. And I went with steel because frankly I have more steel than I do aluminum, but that may make it a little bit harder to do. But now that I readjusted my rivet gun, as I mentioned earlier and also mentioned in another video, that's gonna make this a little bit easier. So what's left to do now besides drill those holes out is actually figure out the electronics part. That might not be as hard as doing all the mechanical things, um, but that is something I still need to obviously get done. Now going through the box of electronic parts that I seem to have accumulating over here, I came across a couple things that gave me some ideas. Uh, I had this piece of perf board. Now, unfortunately, this perf board is just a hair too wide for this to go into. I mean, it will fit, but it's a very, very tight fit a little tighter than I'd like it to be. And it's just a touch longer than it needs to be. So I'll have to, to see if I'm gonna use this and trim it down a little bit. However, I do have these USB ends over here. I got these in like a big bag of 20. And we should be able to connect this to the board and get two USB outputs on this would be pretty nice. And I should have enough room for an LED indicator on this as well. It's just a matter of being able to trim this down. Um, now these are made out of uh, like a fiberglass kind of material. so. They kind of get a messy a little bit here. Now I can use my snips. I should be able to snip this. So we'll have to experiment and see what's the best way to actually to, to take these apart. But if we look at this, the holes came out pretty nice in this. So this should line up just the way we want it to. So it's not bad so far. 
you know, now we're making some headway here. So I took that board and I trimmed it down. First, I cut off one of the edges here, actually one row of holes, and then I just cut the end of it off over here. So this should fit perfectly in here, and we're gonna mount it like that. And I've still gotta figure out where I'm gonna put the switch. That's not such a big deal, but we have this little module, and these are actually very close in size. So the idea now is, what I'm gonna do is this is gonna fit down the bottom like that. And then the top one is gonna fit, obviously, in the top, just like we had before. So when we separate these halves, this should uh, come pretty nicely to, apart. And uh, what I'm probably gonna do is I'll take one of these pieces here and we'll get that fitted into place. Hopefully it's the same pin pitch. And that way, if we need to do anything, we don't have a situation like this where it's just physically connected. And uh, I'm gonna try to set this up where, uh, what we'll do is, is when you turn the power switch on, it'll feed juice down into the actual converter, which is now, escape me, this guy here. And then what'll happen is, is that will turn on. It'll send power up to this little board, which will have the LED indicator on as well. Very similar to how we did this. And that should work pretty well. I need to secure these connectors to the board. Now, normally they have little ears on them that snap them into place, but I don't have the proper spacing on this board to do that. So what I did was I passed a wire up and over the top of this and soldered it in place. I didn't actually do that yet, but that will be soon. But uh, I managed to get one of these ends in here, bring it across and then tension the wire. And then I bent it in place. So when I solder, it should hold it. And I did that originally with this one here and it worked really well. So that's something I've actually done quite a bit with these connectors just to get them to hold in the place just right. Well, sometimes things always don't go as planned. So I got to the point where I got my little module made up over here. And you can see I actually have some uh, traces on the back over here. And while it came out pretty good, there's one inherent issue. You see, the original board I have marked in the back, as I showed before, which side's positive and which side's negative. So on this particular one, looking at it from this way, I marked it the same way. So this connection over here is negative, and then the ones on the outsides over here are also negative. So I hook everything up, and I take my handy little charge doctor over here, and I plug it in, and nothing happened. And I said, well, that's kind of strange. So then I took out my meter over here, put it in the continuity mode, and start tracing around everything. Everything works right. Then I actually trace out uh, with the uh, DC voltage over here, and I, sure enough, I get the right voltage. And then I said, something's not right. Oh, well, maybe it's because on my power supply up here, I'm actually using the 12 volt tap and not the five volt tap, and there's nothing in here to actually reduce the voltage. Well. That wasn't the issue, unfortunately. This does have a specific input, but it will just ignore everything over that input. So then I thought, well, I have another charge doctor, and I plugged this one in, and I heard a little bit of a snap, and I didn't really pay much attention to it at first, but that didn't light up as well, and I said, did I, did I just fry my charge doctors? Did I fry both of them? So I took my little AC uh, adapter over here, this, powering my uh, tablet and I plugged this into it and this one lit up and the other one did not light up and I went uh oh so then I gave it the sniff test and oh yeah Whew, smells like burned electronics I'll have to open this up and see what happened to it but this one doesn't smell like that so now I'm like now nah, what the heck did I do so then I took the original project and I plugged this in this is getting 12 volts in and the little LED indicator is lit and if I plug this in you can see it lights, no problem. So I said, what the heck am I doing wrong? Well, then I grabbed this little abomination. Now this is just a little breakout board. And as you can tell by the wiring on it, I can plug this in and I can put test leads on here and see what the voltage is. So I plug it in and sure enough, it indicates the proper voltage. And it's not until I plugged it into here that I realized here's the outlying issue. You see, this is soldered in so the PC board's down. This plugs in just like that. If you noticed, my charge doctor would not plug in like that. I had to flip it over. This one, however, it plugged right into. This board 
did not. I had to flip it. When I flipped it and I put the red lead of my multimeter over to here and the black lead over here, I got negative five volts on the screen, which meant the polarity is reversed. And then it dawned on me, oh, I know what I did. If you look at these, they're completely the opposite. That's a rookie mistake right there. I should have looked at that right away. This is flipped. So positive is negative and negative is positive on this particular board. So I have to remark this to fix it. What a, what a bummer. And it's especially bummer because I fried this guy here. Now, maybe the chip didn't fry, maybe something else did. So I might be able to recover it, but it makes me wonder, there must be a diode in this one to make this not blow. Uh, now the reason, just real quickly, why I purchased this one after I did this one is because this one has this little lead on it. I can plug it in any direction and I can still read this. This guy here, you might have to plug it in upside down depending on what you're hooking it up to. And it becomes a pain in the neck because there's only one way it's supposed to go. In reality, this is the right way. This one here should plug in this way. So it's facing upwards because usually your PC board is on the bottom. So it just chalk it up to rookie mistake. So I'm gonna have to rectify my issue over here. All right, I managed to get this all put together properly. We have the proper markings on here. Yeah, I know a diode would have fixed this, but you know, this isn't something that's gonna be manipulated a lot. So once it's put together right, it shouldn't have any issues. I went ahead and put uh, one of those orange LEDs in the middle here. Now this, just poked over the edge here, so I filed it down to allow that to fit better. And also it'll diffuse a little bit, so it's not just, just bright blasting light coming out of it. Resistor's on the back side of it, and it worked out just right the way that that's bent in there like that, where the negative part of the LED actually is in line with the negative bus on this. So it worked out pretty good, except the part where I blew up my meter. Now I did look at it real briefly, uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize there was a screw back here. There's a little piece over here where it pops apart, and then there's a screw, but I busted the case. But it's actually this component right here. I'm gonna do another video on this. And I can tell because you can see the inside of the case here has just a little whiff of the magic blue smoke that comes out of this thing. And I might be able to replace that. I mean, it is a surface mount component, but we'll see. Nothing else looks like it's blown out of here. So I'll have to get it under the microscope and, and see if I can read the numbers on that. But now let's button this project up because it's after one o'clock in the morning now already. I got the plate marked for the USB ports, as you can see by these square boxes. And I drilled out the centers first with a smaller bit and then a larger bit, I believe it was a 5 16 Now I'm gonna use my nibbling tool. So the way this works is you insert this into the actual hole and then you nibble it. And it takes little bite-sized pieces out of time that happen to be nice and square. So I can actually square these holes up pretty nicely. And then the only other hole I have to make on this is a little dot for or the LED to, to shine out of and uh, the actual switch, which I'm gonna mount right below that here in the middle. We're getting down to the end now. Got all the electronics done. Uh, only thing left to do is actually just fish these through the hole I made for them to come through and actually attach to the battery pack itself. And everything else here is pretty much ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is before I go any further is I'm gonna take these leads, I'm gonna hook it to a 12 volt power supply and I'm gonna adjust that potentiometer to my actual voltmeter over here reads five volts. Uh, 5.01 volts, that's pretty darn close. All right, it's time to get this thing buttoned up. Here's what the guts look like, not too bad, not too great either, but it's gonna serve the purpose for now. This is just hot milk glued into position all around here and uh, the switch I had to put up on top because it just made more sense the way the wires have to run. And there's just enough slack in here to get this to go where I want to. So now I just gotta sync this into place, get this attached from the front and we'll go ahead and trim these and connect them to the battery as well. Well, I got the thing back together and I left the wires long for a reason. My rivet gun decided to not grab these. I got the first one snapped in and the other three just won't go. And I don't know what's going on. And I said, I'm gonna get this project finished for the night because it's almost quarter to the three in the morning and I'm getting pretty damn tired. And I put the batteries in just to give this one final test and I flipped a little switch and I got nothing. So then I started with the continuity meter and I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's just being very weird right now. Uh, the batteries all show 1.5 volts the whole way around. 
it does not show 12 volts when you put the meter up to here. So something's just not right with this. And I don't really have any more time to put into this for this evening. Uh, I will try to get some sleep and maybe just literally sleep on it and see what happened. Um, hopefully I can just take a quick gander at this before I actually take off for my trip in the morning. Um, of course, I still have to edit this video and that's going to take some time as well. So we'll see. There's a good possibility I might not have anything up for Tuesday because this is just not going the way I anticipated. And sometimes that just happens. I mean, I'm kind of liking the way it's looking in a way, but not really in a way because it's kind of roughed up and I can't get these edges flat and it's just, I kind of wish I just left it the way it was, honestly. Worst case scenario, I do have my other little, uh, the old thing that came out of this. It's just a matter of you know, getting the batteries to work, but eh, what are you gonna do, K sera, sera Good morning. Turns out I couldn't sleep very well last night because this damn thing was on my mind all night. So here it is, I'm trying to fix this. You can see I removed the rivets that I can't rivet. And the one I could rivet was the one that's actually causing the issue. If I pop this out real quick, you can see how it just sticks down just enough where it pushes the battery down and it allows it not to get contact. So I started it in the back here and I put two batteries in and I got three volts and then I added another one I got 4.5 volts and then when they got over to here I got nothing and that's when I figured out my problem so I'll have to get either different rivets or figure out a different way to install this so that's a little more flush like a flush screw in the back here with a nut and top or something but if I put this in now and don't push it all the way in see if I do that it disengages with the contact on top so if I put it just right it will make contact and you can see the orange light lights up and I get 12 volts out of here I get 5 volts out of there so I'll have to uh, I'll have to revisit this when I come back and figure out a different way to mount this plate and of course I'll clean it up and make it a little prettier looking and I'll fix the wires so they're not so long now I thought I'd have to put the switch on the bottom over here because I thought the wires were going to come out but I had the plate oriented the wrong way. Hey, it was late last night. So actually the switch should be on top here and then the wires should come out the bottom directly to these posts and I'll have to get a little rubber grommet to stick in here to keep these wires from getting cut up. In all honesty, I might just cut another plate. It's a little bit easier. I mean, I have an idea of where I want to mount everything now so it will be a lot easier to do. I don't have to do any figuring out. I just have to make it. But I just need something that's going to work for this trip being that I'm going to be leaving in a few hours. So now it's time to get this video uploaded, or at least I have to get it uploaded to my computer first and then I have to edit it and then upload it to YouTube. So I should have plenty of time to do that if I get cracking on it. Well, with that guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, you can click the button here in the middle to do so and check my other videos and we'll see you next time.